And there's a lot to unpack here. A lot of people really alarmed by this, wanting to find out more about what on what happened here. So for more on this, we want to go out now live to Greg Rogers, who's joining us here on live now from Fox, a former FBI agent. Greg, you have a lot of experience from the work that you've done. This also includes narcotics. What can you tell us just about this area in which this happened? How dangerous is it? It's an incredibly dangerous area. Matamoros, the city, is controlled by the Gulf drug cartel. They're a particularly violent drug cartel. They used to be known as the Matamoros cartel. They began business there in the 30s and have maintained primacy there um, for almost uh, almost 100 years. You know, they're in their 93rd year of uh, running that place. It's uh, the state's corrupt. The law enforcement, the military, all um, with the Gulf drug cartel. It's a very, very dangerous place to go. Um, their primary income is from heroin, methamphetamine, cocaine, and fentanyl uh, coming across the border. But um, they're also well known for kidnapping and extortion, and it's one of their main businesses. And specifically talking uh, about the cartels there, you hear cartels, you know it's dangerous, but as someone who has worked with this type of, of situation before in terms of drugs and narcotics, how can you explain the environment there, what it's like, and, and really just uh, painting a picture for us of what that atmosphere is like? It's a, um, Matamoros, when I say it's run by the drug cartel, I mean, it's, they are, um, the primary power there. They're not concerned about law enforcement. Most law enforcement's bought off. They, um, they're not concerned about the military. They've hired fast. They've, most of their security guards come from the military. They, um, they run the place. It's, uh, it, we don't have a situation like that, thankfully, anywhere in the United States. It's not like they're just have some influence. They, they own that place. They run Tamaulipas, they run Matamoros, and nothing happens there that, uh, uh, that they don't have something to do with. They're actually so brazen that they do kidnappings uh, in Brownsville and McAllen. They, they come across the border into the United States. They, um, um, yeah, they're, they're very powerful and they're not the least bit concerned about law enforcement, our law enforcement, or theirs. Well, and, and hearing that these four Americans, it's been indicated that this may be a case of mistaken identity, that this group was unintentionally targeted. How does that happen? I mean, is this just a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time? I think that's unlikely. Um, were that the case, I think they'd already have been turned over to Mexican authorities, uh, sadly. But... Um, I think that's very unlikely. What happens is, unfortunately, if you go into if you go into Matamoros uh, and other cities along the border that are run by other cartels, and you have a um, United States plate from any state on your vehicle, uh, you're a target, and um, you just have to know that it's just a dangerous thing to do. Well, and, and being kidnapped in Mexico is obviously scary in itself. The reports that are coming out of this are so troubling. How do we get these four Americans home safely? Is this still a rescue mission? Yes, it's a rescue mission because what's going to happen if they were kidnapped by the cartel, they're going to, uh, what the cartel's sort of modus operandi is, is they ask for large amounts of money that uh, most people, and I mean multiple millions, they ask for money that most people don't have access to and can't come up with. Um, and then if you can't do that, they'll also demand that you assist them in getting narcotics into the United States. Um, so it's a, it's a very, very dangerous um, situation. And um, we don't have, unfortunately, um, we have agents that work that area, but it's uh, uh, it's very difficult to have sources in Matamotas, and it's very difficult to do um, any proactive American law enforcement in those states because you can't rely on the your law enforcement partners on the other side of the border. They'll someone will give you up. 
Well, and speaking of uh, money reward here, the FBI is offering $50,000 for any information that can lead to locating these victims or helping <laughs> to arrest the kidnappers. Do you think that's enough? If we're talking millions, uh, like you just said previously, is $50,000 even close to, to being enough to try to get some information here? No, again, tragically, um, if you live on that side of the border and you know something and you cooperate with American law enforcement, um, the Gulf cartel, will, you're, they will kill you. And the region in which this happened is one of six Mexican states that the U.S. Department warns against travel for due to the increased risk of crime and kidnapping there. And uh, we just heard from in that, in that last report that the four Americans that were there were going there for medical reasons. Uh, obviously, there have been some really awful, deadly stories to come out of these some trips that Americans have taken to Mexico. Uh, but with this being so dangerous, knowing that these four people were going for medical reasons, to your knowledge, is that a common thing to do, especially knowing that this area is known for violent cartels? Um, it was a lot more common because you can get prescription drugs across the border for, you know, pennies on the dollar, literally. But um, in recent years, I think our State Department has done a pretty good job of uh, advising people and people who live on the border, um, you know, have, um, they know because they have associates and friends and know people who've had difficulty for crossing. So my, my take on that would be there's easier ways to get um, medications, and I'm not recommending anybody do anything illegal, but there's all sorts of online pharmacies you can get meds for cheaper, um, you know, but going into Mexico to save money on medications uh, into into Matamoros, uh, Juarez, those types of cities is just a bad idea. Does I mean, there's doesn't matter how much you're saving, you're literally risking your life. Yeah, what is your advice to people who are listening right now? What should they know about visiting Mexico? Is it just those areas or, or just in general? What do you think is important for them to know right now? Um, I would pay very close attention to State Department guidelines about which states not to go to, the states that they uh, absolutely um, put at the higher levels. You should just stay out of. That's, um, it's, uh, it's very dangerous. You're targeted. If you look like an American, if you're driving a car with American plates, you're just a target. There's no reason to go. I mean, it's um, it's just too dangerous right now. There are states that, the, again, that different drug cartels run. And um, they, it's, bad. It, for the life of me, I, I, you just shouldn't go. Greg, thanks so much. This has been a, a really informational in, in interview here and a conversation. We appreciate you joining us on Live Now from Fox. My pleasure. You have a good evening. You as well. Thanks.